I'm not even going to touch it. I am so excited. It is officially September 29th. It is, in fact, not yet October. It is not October yet, and the one wheel is back. Look. What am I more excited about seeing? Patrick, I'm so excited to see you, but also... <gasps> What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? It has made the journey back. It is September 29th. I said it was never going to get here by October, and it did. Let's open it up. All right, there we go. All right. It's back. It looks maybe better than ever. So supposedly what they did is replaced the power button, some controller in here, and redid the firmware. Let's put it on, see what happens. Here comes the moment of truth. Okay, we are powering up. We've powered up. Okay. We're on. Okay. We are connecting to the app that would never work right anymore. Let's see. Super bored. We are activated, 80% battery. I think we're good to go. Let's uh, take it for a cruise around the block and see what happens. All right, it works, but the real test, it needs to do a proper charge and then a big ride. And it of course just started raining. So we'll cut to that. All right, we're in the garage. I got the one wheel back. I also got the boys. Boys, say hi. Hi. Where's Patrick? Patrick, where are you? Say hi, Patrick. Perfect. Perfect. So, took the one wheel out for a spin last night. It was great. The only thing that was not great was the fact that it started absolutely dumping rain. And I swear, it's the first time I've ever been out where it was just puking rain I didn't have the uh, charger cover on and I didn't have a fender on, so I was covered in mud. Long story short, very cool. Long story short, make sure you have that plug on. It's very useful. Patrick, get out of Okay, got a knife away from the child. Very good idea. So, took it out for a great ride. Super, Thomas, stop. You stay out of there now too. This video is not going, Thomas, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop. Video's not going very well, but also what I need to do is actually dry out the one wheel now and then also get all of my accessories back on. They were not joking when they said no accessories allowed. They even took off the uh, magnetic clips for the uh, Craft and Ride magnetic fender. And what else do I have to put on? They left the fangs on and they left my Kushnug high on, uh, but so I gotta put the fender clips back on and I also have to put the uh, float plate back on. Cool. All right, we got the accessories on. We got a float plate on there. We got our sweet magnetic fender on there from Craft and Ride, and we are off. This is like the first real big ride I did with the board once it was all fixed up. Um, and it was really kind of like a test for me. Uh, so you can watch right there. A couple bikers actually go by me. I was nice and let them pass me because we we're out on the road, so I wanted to and they also had no idea what I was doing. So I just let them go by me, but I knew I'd get them on the uphill. Um, but so riding with the board, I, the biggest thing for me was that I did not really trust the board yet. After taking a couple like sketchy falls because the, the board just turned off, I really didn't know what to expect out of it. So some of the things that I normally would have been totally fine with doing, I kind of was definitely going a little slower and really trying to feel for any weirdness out of the board and also had my uh, back foot really twisted so that if I did feel like I was going to get ejected off of it, I could really kind of go right into a uh, right into a sprint as fast as possible and hopefully save myself. I even like put pants on for the first time to uh, try to make sure in case I did skid, uh, I hopefully didn't chop myself up too bad. Um, but 
that said, this is like the first week of October that I was taking a nice long ride. I'd got on the board right at the end of September um, and taking it for some short ones, but this was gonna be a nice long one where I was really trying to push it and test it out. Um, I am kind of out on a country road that links up with Sunken Meadow State Park. Um, and it's just a good test of like, I have to be on the shoulder of kind of like a pretty big sketchy road but it links into Sunken Meadow Park and then I can get onto a whole bunch of trails from there to kind of get a feel for the board on the streets at full speed and then getting it into the trails and see if any weirdness happens. Um, I can, can skip to the end, nothing weird happens. It rode completely great uh, and I was super psyched on that. Uh, you can actually kind of see I've now completely passed those bikers and they are now on an uphill and I also on an uphill, but I have a motor and they have legs. So uh, it was definitely fun uh, blowing past them and then not really ever looking back other than the camera right now, which is actually looking back. Um, so talking about uh, getting the board back, what that process was like, and then if it is actually fixed or not. Um, the biggest frustration I had was obviously how long it took. Like I identified this problem at the end of August and it wasn't until the end of September that I had a fixed board back. So I could be happy that I have a fixed board back that was covered by the warranty. Um, but in that process, I had to spend 20 bucks because I did not keep my original one wheel box, not thinking that that was ever something I was gonna need to have. So, and instead of me trying to go to Staples or Office Max during a pandemic, trying to find the box that will actually fit this thing, uh, they, for the price of 20 bucks, sent me a box, but they sent it with the absolute cheapest shipping from California to New York. And it took over, it took literally two weeks for that box to get to me. Packed up the board that was in the last video, uh, packed it up, shipped it. It got there in like something like 10 days, which again, is just crazy long amount of time. Uh, and then they finally, the fixing only took probably about three days, four days for, before they were able to get it back in the box and shipping. And then for whatever reason, on the way back, it went much faster. Here I am trying to get up. Uh, it's now been like over a month since I'd been on my board. So uh, got a little sketchy trying to get up this trail entrance into uh, Sunken Meadow. But so it's super annoying that that stuff took so long. Uh, and to me, annoying that I had to spend 20 bucks to get a box to ship back a broken board. Um, but whatever, it's what it is. Um, now we're up on the trails. What's cool about this kind of trail network is there's for the most part, very, very, very few people on it. And we're still in full pandemic mode because that's never going to go away. Um, so it's nice to be able to get out onto trails, but also not really have to worry about hanging around with too many people or getting into people's personal space. Um, but also these trails have a lot of different variety to them. Some of them are very steep. Some of them are very packed like this is. And then some of it's kind of sandier, some of it's rockier. So you can really kind of buzz around and it's only about a mile to get here. Um, one of the things that I was still kind of hesitant about is that as the battery power gets lower on the board, if that was somehow leading to it triggering on and off. Um, but thankfully, uh, wasn't really didn't wasn't the case on this day and hasn't been the case in all the rides I've taken since so it really does seem like they fixed whatever the deal was um, as I said in the intro to the video uh, what they said they did is fixed the power button and a controller unit and the firmware so <laughs> it's kind of sketchy to me to think that the real issue here might have simply been that the power button was broken and it was somehow causing some kind of trip that was just cutting the power to the board uh, instead of like some gradual shutdown or like some more controllable stuff. It was just killing the power. And that's what was kind of flipping me off the front of it. Um, but whatever, good on them. They fixed it. They didn't charge me anything. Uh, and now I get the board back and just, you know, cruising around, enjoying it. Um, what's cool about stuff like this to me is like because the one wheel is not a speed machine. Uh, you know, it very easily, you can get up to top speed and cruise and you're like, oh, wow, I wish I could go faster than this. Um, especially when you're on big, like open streets, but in here, you know, 12, 14, 15 miles per hour feels plenty fast when you're going over, you know, bumpy and rutted up trails and there's the gravel is kind of spitting out and you're flicking around leaves and all that stuff. So that's where you can really just get into the vibe and cruise around, have some fun with it. Uh, and get back into that, uh, you know, just cruise mode. Um, well, yeah, so riding around, uh, the board was back. I talked about before that, you know, kind of all the accessories were stripped off. So 
anything that kind of came back from them, I got back on the board and got it running again. Um, and I've really just been working on getting uh, confidence and trust back into the board that it is not going to eject me because after that happens a few times and you just get randomly ejected off the board with no pushback, and no warning, it kind of breaks the, uh, you know, your trust with the system and you realize how close you are to just eating shit on this thing. So uh, it's taking a couple rides for sure to just get back into just bombing at full speed, feeling pushback come in and then back it off, get right to that level and then just kind of hang out. Um, but I can report though that I've had absolutely no problems with the board since it has come back um, and have been kind of pushing it as much as I normally would. Like, uh, you know, I'm not some trickster or something like that. I'm not doing anything crazy. Uh, but all I'm looking for is that when I get on, the board works and I can kind of get, get away from a ride and have a good time and not have to worry about anything. Um, but so as you can actually see on the trail here, that specific part and this section gets a lot sandier. Um, what I've noticed in sand, especially because that's where having one wheel and having a smooth tire can get a little sketchy. I try to kind of like back off the power a little bit and also not try to be doing too much turning. Uh, here I am just kind of checking out my watch. What's actually really cool now, where are we at? We got a ton of juice left. Um, what's really cool now about having I, maybe I just didn't realize that my board might have always had a situation since I first got it, because even when the firmware was not sending me firmware errors, I always had a really weak connection between my phone and my watch and the board. Um, and having that now seemingly always work, that anytime I kind of, you know, check out my watch and look at the One Wheel app, it seems to always be connected, whereas it never did that. Like it would, con it would be connected to my watch like maybe one out of every four times. So now having that actually work consistently is pretty cool. Um, so maybe there had been more stuff going on the entire time and I just never knew. Um, but so in my experience now though, the firmware works. The, the phone is staying consistently connected. The watch is staying con consistently connected and there's just no weirdness. Everything is just kind of working the way it's supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, so cruising around, enjoying it. Um, really have no complaints besides the process of getting this board back and forth to California to get it fixed. It took a while um, and I want everything right now. So it was a bummer that it took a while and I kind of lost like that whole stretch of September, which around here in New York is still really good time to go out for a ride. Now it's starting to get a lot colder. The days are getting a lot shorter. So the chances of me getting out on long rides on a what was basically a daily basis all summer has definitely gotten a lot more limited, um, but it works. And that's the most important thing. I'm super psyched on that. And uh, yeah, I got really nothing else. Um, I'm finishing up this ride. Like I pretty much on this ride on this day, I just basically now go back on this trail loop all the way back around to the highway, take the highway all the way back to the house. Um, and strangely enough, I still was at like well over 30 or 40% battery left by the time I got home. And I think it was about a five mile ride. Um, so even then, I don't know if it was just the particular trails and roads I rode on, but I honestly felt like the battery even performed better than it was performing when I was having all these firmware issues. Um, so whatever, you know, I'm not gonna complain. Everything works way better now. Uh, I'm psyched on it. And uh, as I keep riding, I'm sure I'll post another one of these kind of vloggy ride along videos. So if, you know, you dig it, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, share, subscribe, like, do all that YouTube stuff. And yeah, I'll see you later.